Hey, what's going on guys? Matt back here with another tutorial and today we're going to be looking at human AI. Last time we got the cars going and this time we're going to be adding our humans that are going to be doing pretty much actually the same kind of system. But obviously just stick into paths that we're going to have set around the outside here and later on we'll add buildings to be able to border those paths off. So what I've got in the scene, that's different anyway, is this path triggers one. Now this has got a lot of things inside it and each of those are just triggers similarly to the way we had the ones on the road. But this time we've got corners and we've got cross right, road crossings and then we've also got the roads marked out just so uh, the humans don't walk over into the roads and get hit by a car. So they can only cross at certain points where they're going to end up hitting another point, which is all good to keep it tidy. And then all the corners tell them to go in each direction. So if I hit play, we can just see how the humans work. They're all walking around and this one's chosen to cross, cross the road. Sometimes they turn back round. There's different, uh, you have a lot of settings that you can change depending on where you want to go based on how what the chances that there are to cross the roads or to not cross the roads or to turn or to later on there's also ones to go into the buildings if you've seen the uh, preview there's the buildings there as well which are part of the same triggers so you can see them all choosing random locations they walk at random speeds as well which is good and uh, yeah the other op the new objects we've got are prefabs uh, which I've put into a folder just called humans so I've got the human prefab which is actually just a cylinder for now obviously you can put your own models in and I will be doing tutorials in the future on how to create your models and bring them in and uh, I'll also make some models that you guys can use if you'd like as well we've also got um, just a head on top of that because then uh, when the humans get killed their heads will fall off if they get hit by a car or something when they're running away from a zombie and then we've also got the human target which is similar to the car target where it's just the thing that our humans are following so that it doesn't have a mesh render on so our human target is the main thing that we're going to be looking at because that's got actually really the movement that we're going to be using. We've also obviously created all of these junctions which are actually all the same. I've just uh, put Z axis is looking in the, in the rotation that we want them to look as if they were to cross the road. So if a human walks into this, this path turn, they're gonna, the only choice is to cross the road this way. That's the only direction that the humans will change, otherwise they'll carry on walking. Corners are slightly different. They've got the same script on them but it's got his corner is ticked and these. Uh, they can go in any direction off of the corners so it doesn't really matter which way they're, they're facing but the way I've done it is so there is a higher chance that they're going to go not to cross the road so they're, they're more likely to turn back on themselves or go this way and they won't try and cross the road so and the new scripts we've got are all of these human ones if I open that up we can have a look the humans have just got a human movement script similar to the car movement script where they're following and they've got the rotate distance and all those things We'll start off with the human, no, the path turn script. So the path turns, initially they're going to be spawning humans uh, simply because it's the easiest way to spawn humans at the, at the moment. So we've got a variable of human, which is the prefab. So this is for the setting up the game. I've commented everything, like I said before. So we've also got our function start with a random chance to spawn a human. And then that has a random chance to look one direction or the other. So it instantiates them. Uh, the prefab that we had on the position of the uh, path turn object and then it also has a transform rotation multiplied by quart quaternion Julia uh, 0 90 0 so it rotates it 90 degrees basically but and uh, you do it by negative 90 here to rotate the other way so it goes either to the left or to the right the next part is going to be the human movement so we've also got the similar to the car movement like I said earlier we've got a two follow object we've also got a movement speed a rotation speed a distance from the target and then we've also got a hidden triggers which is the layer mask that we're going to have um, so if I go back into the scene I'll show you how we've set that up because the layer mask is quite important to make sure that the humans find each other and walk around each other anything that's not in the hidden triggers layer so things we've got in the hidden triggers layer all of these things and the way you add them is you select the object you can select multiple objects to add multiple objects as well so if you added like that many objects and then you drop down the layer here add layer and then you, I've added a new one called hidden triggers I've added a capital T you don't have to add a capital T as long as you use the same words throughout and then I've added, I've added it to every single trigger that we've got in the scene and I think that includes the road ones as well. Yeah, I've added all the road ones as well. And the human targets are also hidden triggers. Go back into the script. We've got the hidden triggers is a variable which is actually an integer, which is equal to 
one is less than less than eight and what that means is it creates a bit mask for layer eight um, and if I go back over here you can see that layer eight is the hidden triggers layer so we then actually want to reverse that because we don't want to go check only against that we want to check against everything except layer eight so we want to go hidden triggers equals and then this reverses it the squiggly line there it is reverse the hidden triggers um, and it reverses it there so inside our update function we've got as long as we've got a to follow object which is set by our parent when they create us just like with the cars we've got exactly the same very much we've got the position uh, with the new rotation quaternion look rotation and uh, we transform our rotation with a lerp to go towards the rotation then we set our as long as we're not too far from the target we, we move towards them it's exactly the same really we've just got walking instead of driving it's a little bit tidier uh, because there's a couple of less things because the humans don't stop in traffic as much so we've also got if we hit a wall then we destroy ourselves just like the cards do as well and we also destroy our two follow object and then we've got an on collision enter with a car so if we hit into a car we're going to have a little sequence which is going to make it so we have we add physics to ourselves and we fall over so we've got a if we collide with a car and then if we have a two follow object then we destroy our two follow object straight away and we set our two follow to null just to tidy up the script up here so it doesn't cause errors we've then got we check for the objects the ch children inside our transform so the transforms inside our transform uh, with a variable of head just because that's easier because the only thing we're supposed to find is the head we shouldn't have added any more children to that object so it's just going to find that it's just the easiest way to find the child we've then got um, we add because we've got rigid bodies on everything we go head dot rigid body dot constraints equals rigid body constraints dot none and that means we don't have any we don't have any constraints against the physics anymore we also have head rigid body use gravity so we want to use the gravity we stop up, stop the body from being the parent of the head and then we change its color to red just to show that it's been hit by a car we've also got our ourself so the actual body of the, of the human does exactly the same thing so the constraints go to none it uses gravity and we change our color to red so moving on to the human target movement we've got our variable of car data holder which is the transform so that's exactly the same we want to get data of the car of all the cars so we can not hit into the cars so when we're trying to cross the road we don't walk straight in front of one so we need to get data from that we also have a human which is the prefab and then we have my human which is the, my, my own follower it's fairly similar to the cars this one we've also got walking and crossed so we've got if we are walking then we go in and if we're crossed it's similar to the uh, being in traffic one for the cars so we need to stop when we so we are when we're not walking we're also crossing we've got our movement speed and then we've got our movement speed holder just because we change our movement speed based on whether we're walking across the road so they walk a little bit faster across the road just so they don't walk slowly and get hit by cars a lot so we've got our car data holder is equal to uh, this is in the start function we've got our car data holder is equal to game objects dot find with tag car data so we just instantly find the car data and then we leave it at that we've got my human when we create our human straight away so we instantiate human which is the prefab on our position and our rotation and then we set that one's to follow to us so it starts following us we set our movement speed to a random range between 0 0.005 and 0 0.015 that's obviously going to be based on the size of your scene but that's how it suits my scene um, we've then got our my human their move speed is equal to my speed my move speed so we make sure that our humans moving at the same speed that we are and then uh, we store our speed holder as well because of when we move faster later on we need to have a store of our base movement speed and then we just invoke a repeating of check cars similar to the way we did with the cars just to make sure that we're going to be not walking in front of a car when we're crossing the road we've then got an update we've just got if we are walking then we're transforming forward and that's it for the update function and then we've got an on trigger enter if uh, if the other one is the pathway points which are the if I go into the scene we've got all of these are pathway points and apart from pathway to cross which we'll go come to in a minute because that's uh, the ones in the road and they're just tagged as pathway to cross the rest of them are all tagged as pathway points so make sure you tag those and then back into the script we've got the well if we hit that pathway point then if the other one is a corner then we wait for a little bit 
uh, just to make just for a random rage, just to make sure that we're not going to be everybody walking on fixed part fixed paths. We're all going to be walking on different parts of the path, and then we um, set a variable whether we're going to change our direction, and that's a random range between zero and ten. And then if that's equal to uh, less than even if that's less than four, then we've got a four in ten chance of uh, matching the rotation of the corner, so the rotation that the corner is going initially. And then we've also got a 4 in 10 chance of doing the rotation to the right of that object. Like I said earlier, it's going to be rotating following those axes. Otherwise, there's a, there's a much less chance to actually walk across the road. So there's a 1 in 10 chance of walking across the road here. And there's a 1 in 10 chance of walking across the road if it's actually facing the other direction. So that's the way I've done it based on uh, between a number between 0 and 10. We've got if it's less than everything, then that's fine. We've also then got crossed equals false because it's set to crossed. Uh, we've got a crossed tutorial. Uh, cross. Because we've got a crossed uh, variable up here. And that's set to true later on when we're choosing whether we're going to cross. So And that's actually at this point. So if we aren't at a corner and we've hit a pathway point and crossed is true. So if we've just crossed across the road, then cross is then set back to false. And uh, we wait for we wait, we wait for a random range again just to make sure that we're not going to be walking across a random uh, we're we're not going to be all walking across the same part of the path, and then we wait for a random range again. So we've got fifty fifty chance to turn right, and we've got a fifty fifty chance to turn left. So that's once we've crossed the road, we we hit into one of the points. We need to choose whether we're going to turn left or right once we've gone into a new path, basically, and then we've got. Outside of that, we've then got else if our random range is zero to fifty. So if we hit um, if we hit the object and we're not crossed, so we aren't we haven't just crossed the road, then we've got a fifty fifty chance to cross to go across the road across the points that are these path turners. So we'll go we we'll walk onto one and then we will choose a fifty fifty chance to walk across. Otherwise, we'll just carry on walking and ignore the, that path altogether. So. That's that for that part. And we've also got if we hit the path wait to cross, then our walking is set to false. So basically, if we um, the minute we hit into the road, so that's these ones again, path wait to cross. If we hit into one of those and we stop walking, and then that's triggered by the um, checking for cars later on. So if we if we leave the if we leave the trigger of that path wait to cross. And our movement speed actually shouldn't be equal to our movement speed holder at the time. So we're just checking that it's not. So we should be running. And then our movement speed is set then returned to the speed of our movement speed holder, which is the basic movement speed that we set at the, t at the start with the random range. And then further down, we've got our child's movement speed is also set to that because we changed that within the check cars. Uh, function in a minute and we set our cross to true to say we've just crossed the road so the next t the next trigger that we hit needs to choose which direction we're going to be walking in after we've crossed the road and then inside our check cars function we've got if we aren't walking so that's set here so once we hit one of the roads then we aren't walking so then we wait for 0.5 seconds up to 0.5 seconds before we choose what we're going to do we temporarily set our walking to true similarly to the way that the cars sit at a junction and we check against all the cars um, in the car data holder, and then we also check uh, if the car, if there is a car, and the, our distance to that car is less than six. Obviously, you can set that to whatever you want. You could set it as a variable at the top if you wanted to as well. Then we set our walking to false, and effectively we say, okay, there is definitely a car and it's not safe. So loop it again until the car's safe, until the road's safe. Otherwise. If we don't find a car that we're going to, that's going to hit into us, then we set our movement speed to twice the movement speed of the movement speed holder, and then we do exactly the same for our child again. And then obviously that gets picked up late, later on by these scripts, just to make sure these functions, just to make sure that we're going to uh, stop running because we don't want to run everywhere. We want to just run across the road and then stop so we don't get hit by the cars. And that's pretty much it for the human AI at the moment. Um, so. Again, if you just watch them for a little bit, you can see that they, these guys, they're going at a slightly different speed. 
this one's chosen to turn this way, this one's chosen to turn back the way it was, and they've got a random chance to do anything, so they have a chance to cross the road, and they have a chance to turn each direction on every corner, and they check against all the all the cars that are randomly walk, driving around as well, so I hope that's useful for you guys, and next tutorial we'll be doing buildings and setting up the buildings so we can have humans stored inside those buildings, so I hope that's going to be useful, and I'll see you next time.